If you have a question, please raise your hand. I will get to you and answer. You remain seated so that the light is very becoming for you. Okay? <laughs> we don't want you up there, and you know, we don't want bad reflections. So, if you have questions for Nancy or the wonderful mm -hmm. guest here, here we go. And you can state who you are if you'd like. My name is Katie. Nancy, do either of your sons sew? <laughs> Excellent question. Do either of my sons sew? Well, they have, <laughs> but you know. They don't you, sew on a regular basis, nor do I expect them to. <laughs> okay, we, have a, we have a question here. My name's Barb. I'd like to know what your sewing rooms look like. Okay, I'm coming back up with the microphone because I want to hear this too. What do each of your sewing rooms look like? At, the, at, at Nancy's Notions or at my home? <laughs> um, it's sort of under control. <laughs> Um, right now I'm making a landscape quilt for my daughter. She turned 30 and it's all because of Natalie that I'm doing that because she inspired me many years ago to do landscape quilting. Um, for organizing my sewing room, it's a little challenging. Um, I do have things in the cupboard and I do have a roll away, you know, table and wonderful cabinets, but uh, you know, sometimes you do too many projects at one time, so <laughs> I'm guilty. <laughs> But I try very hard. I'm going to pass it on. Yeah. I share my sewing area with other things in my home, so my office and my sewing area are together. And so I have many of my things packed away in a cupboard that's right next to it. So when I'm sewing, I bring those things out. When I need to use my computer, I have that out. So it's a shared area. You're too organized. She's too organized. <laughs> Right now, it really, it's a mess. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been uh, working on travel gear, which is my upcoming topic on Sewing with Nancy. So there's fabric and all kinds of things all piled up. Photography will happen next week, and you just, you know, it's a mess. I like to call my sewing areas movable feasts. I don't get to, I like to be around the people I love when I sew. I, I've, because I'm retired, I, so I take it in the TV room when my husband's watching TV or from I'm with my granddaughters, I try to sew around them so that they might get inspired or wherever there's a need, that's where I am with my sewing machine. When my youngest uh, child, my son, moved out for college, I emptied the living room and put my sewing room there because it had been on the second floor and my bedroom's downstairs, so now I never go up there anymore. It's wonderful. <laughs> and, uh, and as you, you know, go by the, the living room, sewing room, there's a, a hallway, and I now call that baggage claim because <laughs> <laughs> everything's coming in and out, you know, from the office too. Well, as you know, I'm a landscape quilter, so all my fabrics are organized in terms of seasons. They are. Mm -hmm. Spring is all the flowers, Fall is all the golden leaves and red leaves. And uh, Nancy knows my sewing room really well, and she knows just where to go for the right fabric. <laughs> I can go shopping at Natalie's. Yeah, it's really a lot of fun. I just want to answer your question about um, do my boys sew? Well, one time, uh, like 20... Six years ago, we had a grand opening at Nancy's Notions, and I made a suit, and... and Ted was, made a habit of him sitting on our, my lap as I would sew at night, and he'd pull out pins, you know, as I'd stitch a seam, pull out pins, and then he'd, you know, he'd do that. And then I had my skirt over the ironing board, and I, two days before the event, I was going to hang, hem it, and I pulled up my skirt, and there's a cut, cut in it, and a uh, big cut. And uh, my father-in-law had to go get fabric at the, at the local fabric store and I quickly make it. And my dad said to Ted at the time, he was Teddy, he said, Teddy, did you cut Mama's skirt? He said, I made a pocket. <laughs> and Mommy cried. I'm Lisa Joe. Um, this has been awesome, by the way. Oh, You've thanks. done such a fabulous job. Um, two questions. Do you uh, like your celebrity? I mean, you were, you've kind of talked about people know you. and 
<laughs> um, you do a lot of events, and what do you what do you think of the celebrity? Oh, what do I think of being a celebrity? I'm not. I suppose in some sense I am because I'm on television, but I'm just a teacher on television, and everyone needs to brush their teeth in the morning, or they should. So <laughs> I, I really don't try to think of myself as, as that. But I, I appreciate that people enjoy watching my program and enjoy being in my class. I guess I thank you for that. Yeah. There are questions? Does the family want to ask questions? <laughs> <laughs> Over here. Yeah, here we go. Hi, Nancy. I'm Cindy. Hi, Cindy. The products that you show on TV, do you, act, you actually use that stuff at home? <laughs> <laughs> the products that I show on TV, do I actually use that stuff? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I get sent lots of things, lots of products, and some never make it to the TV airways. And the interesting thing about notions and products on television, I, can't say, I cannot say brand names on public television. I mean, people can swear and, and do terrible things on television, and I can't say Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I have to give you codes or hints what the product is. I can't say that there's a certain type. I have to say what it does. Mm. So that's, that's why, because of public, and I'm delighted to be in public television, don't get me wrong, but that's the wish thing I wish I could help you find things. Yeah. Hi, I'm Karen. Hi, Karen. Do you have a favorite project that you have done in the, like in the past 10 years, something that really sticks out in your mind? Oh, well, favorite project that I've done in the last 10 years that stuck in my mind. Wow. Um, I, I do like to do landscape quilting. Recently, I have two granddaughters, so I've made their baptismal, baptismal gowns. That was special. Um, Oh, I guess those come to mind right away. So special things for special people. <laughs> My name's Tina. And yeah, first of all, I've been watching you since 1988. That's when I moved to Wisconsin. OK. And thank you, because uh, you've been my lifesaver. Oh. Second of all is I've really. <laughs> And I really mean that. Oh, thank you. Okay. I have just been in awe with landscape quilting. Uh huh. What is the best way to get started with landscape <laughs> quilting? Fussy cutting, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pass this to Nat. Well, I think the best way to get started is to watch <clears throat> our videos and our, read our books. Our first book, uh, Landscape Quilts is still available. You can, I think you can get it from Amazon.com. And uh, we go step by step, as Nancy has taught me to do. And uh, there are three other books that might be really helpful as well, and videos that are still available. And what you, if you watch a show on, on public television or on, on DVD or you're in a different area, now you can watch 24 hours a day online at www.nancyzeman.com. 52 of our most recent shows are online. So you could see lots of different shows. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just say the workbook, I think. Does anybody else have comments on landscape quilting or want to Donna it? does. Go ahead. I was just going to say they did that wonderful program with the workbook where they were doing smaller elements. So you learned a lot of techniques without doing a really big project. You could test things in smaller scale. And they work out really nice as little gifts as well. And you can get those from Nancy's Nancy. Nancy's 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 Nancy's
each one of you actually uh, that I've had the distinct pleasure to meet and kind of grew up with the past 21 years. Um, obviously, I've thought very highly of you. I've always loved it when you came over because I knew it was going to be lasagna night. Cause, you know, that's, that's how it was every time we had, we had a guest coming over. You have to know it's kind of it's a little bit true. But um, I guess I'm curious. I know I've made a lot of kind of weird requests for things to sew of my mom. Like if I were to tear something, I'd always need repairs because I was outside a lot or making trouble or whatever. Um, what are some of the stranger things that each one of you ever had to work with or sew, you know, be it for your family or interesting projects that might stick out to you? Um, let me think about it. One of the strangest landscape quilt experiences I ever had was quilting with my grandson. He was seven years old, and he had made a beautiful design with a sun in the corner and lions and tigers peeping through trees. And as soon as he finished gluing his design, and he said to me, Grandma, I'm going to the bathroom. You sew it while I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> The oddest thing that someone asked me to embroider on was an umbrella. And I had to, you know, take the, uh, and I don't know the right technology. The but ribs. The ribs. <laughs> See, she knows everything. <laughs> take the ribs out of the little sleeve and hold the umbrella while it was in the hoop and stitching, you know, so that it wouldn't all pop out. And, but it was successful. Of course, when they went in the rain, they got wet because then there were holes in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I'm not sure this is the oddest thing, but this is a fairly recent thing. Years ago, I don't know if any of you remember, I wrote a book with um, Palmer Plitch publishing on Sewing Bridal. And um, recently, I live in a little town where everybody knows everyone, and I got a call about 8, eight or 8.30, and it was a bride crying, and she said, my cat got my veil. Oh. And she was going to be married the next morning at 11. I said head right over to the store, buy a bolt of tool, and then come see me. And um, so that night, I had made a lot of these because I was a bridal seamstress in college as well. Mm -hmm. So I made the headpiece. I had a picture, and I kind of had an idea because I had the torn up original <laughs> headpiece. <laughs> and, I, and then she came in the morning at 8.30, and picked it up and she put it on and looked in the mirror and she started crying. I went, uh-oh. She goes, it's lovelier than the first. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a good story. Last summer, I got involved uh, for the uh, second or third time in uh, the opera that was presented in my little town of Aurora, Minnesota. It, during the Northern Lights Music Festival. And the project uh, which I worked on with a friend of mine was red and gold satin bed coverings. Uh, uh, Gianni, I don't know, I forget the second name of this opera. Um, anyway, we, had, we made the top curtain, we made the comforter, we made the bed skirts, all for this really slippery fabric. We were set up in the high, uh, halls of the high school, sewing so all this stuff. And it looked pretty sharp, and it, the bed is an important part of that opera. Um, so it was kind of a fun project, but rather strange, too. <laughs> I guess probably the most unusual thing, and it's really not that unusual that I've done, but I have one daughter and several sons, and I was always sewing things for my daughter, and so finally my son and my husband, who happened to be hunters, said, it's about time you made something for us. So I had to make gun cases and hunting vests. <laughs> you know, I do a lot of sewing in the production room, and we keep up um, with the frantic deadlines of the catalog. So, you know, there might be a few odd things there, but um, I guess n maybe not the odd sewing items that we make is what I'm going to describe is the odd maybe positions that I might be sewing. I might be standing up at the counter with the serger and sewing. I might be standing by an ironing board with a serger on it and sewing. So that's my oddities about sewing. Other questions? Okay. Hi, I'm Janet. I am Nana to 11 grandchildren. Wow. What are you to your grandchildren? 
pass it along. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> proud to be a grandmother, so I'm, I'm called grandma. But my, I will take whatever name my grandchildren will give me. <laughs> um, Zane is my daughter's oldest child. She's soon to have a second son. And I am Bopper. Okay. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. Well, I'm just grandma to my five grandchildren. I have to tell you one story. When my oldest grandson was born, I made him fleece jackets in the winter. And the first one that I made for him, I forgot to take a pin out. Aww. And he put it on, and the next year when he was a little bit bigger, he wanted another jacket, and he said, you are going to take the pins out. <laughs> Um, sorry, no grandchildren to report. <laughs> no children either. <laughs> um, I was supposed to be Gigi, that is Grandma Gail, but my oldest granddaughter could not say that, so I'm Shishi. <laughs> and I'm about to be a grandmother in July, so I don't have a name yet. Mm -hmm. I'm just Grandma, but I have 11 grandchildren. Aww. Just call me Gaga. <laughs> I have a question okay. for all of you. Okay, Linda. Are any of you wearing clothes you made today? Well, this is a pattern with, that we have with McCall's. So, Eileen, yeah, embroidered, embroidered, yeah. So, yes. My tank top. I have a little story to tell about sewing. Is that okay? Um, <laughs> I Cold, took, cl closer, closer to I took a day of vacation one time, and it was homecoming week, and I was going to be traveling, so I, I was making an outfit, okay? And I am frantically sewing, and now it's getting close to the time for the parade. And I have taken this day of vacation, and I'm going to be spending it with my children. <laughs> And I just realized at that moment, it was more important for me to spend time with my children versus impressing people that I knew how to sew a garment for myself, because I do a lot of sewing. So that's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> OK, other questions or are there? I'm I was sorry. Just, I was just going to mention that I often buy, because I'm a taller person, buy dresses and then shorten them to tunics and take I buy them a little bit bigger size and then take them into the size that fits me and so that's what I and did that's with what this. you did with that yes okay. we have another question back here okay are you involved with the wounded warrior quilt um, project and if so how long how much longer do you anticipate that going on well have we been involved with the wounded warrior quilt project uh, yes, we had a guest on Sewing with Nancy that we relate, we interviewed, and there are, there are several wounded warrior type of organizations. Um, so Much Comfort, I believe, is another organization where they modify uh, shorts and tops with Velcro side seams for easy access where obviously they need to, for medical access. Um, on, uh, on the Nancy's Corner section of our website, we give connections to all of these volunteer groups that you can sew for and help. The question I can answer, how long it will be in, organ you know, in, in need? Probably way too long. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. We have time for about three more questions. OK, great. Okay. Here's my name is Terry. Thank Hi, you for this opportunity this afternoon. When I think over the last three decades, how much has evolved and things have changed, where do you get your ideas and inspirations? Well, uh, ideas and inspirations come from just plain living. And you see a need, or people call me, email us, send us information. We go to trade shows. Lot of, lots of times online, like uh, whatever's kind of happening in, like we have a new program coming up for this new series on making tablet keepers for iPads and Kindles and things like that. So that's kind of a trendy thing. So we just follow the trends. Another question, another two more questions, and then we'll 
close it up? I, I actually want to make a comment, Nancy. Um, uh -huh. Directed at all of you, but especially Nancy, I want to thank you for the respect and the compassion that you bring to the term teacher. And that's very needed at this time. We really oh. appreciate it. Thank oh, you, thank Nancy. You.